Welcome to the Interesting Podcast, episode number 75. This episode is another return guest, another fan favorite, another great return of the one and only Randall Duke Kim. That's right, guys. We're back. We are back with Oogway himself, and this time he brought his wife Annie with him, who's also delightful. It's so much fun talking to them, and uh, we just kind of catch up. You know, they they just got done binge watching Game of Thrones, so that was really fun to talk to them about that. Um, and then we broke down like uh, how they met, which is really cool, and then uh, growing together in the theater and all that stuff. And so they had this really cool like one two plan where Randall was on stage and he was performing and then Annie would be in the audience and she would see him from a different perspective and then work with him after the show to build his performance and just make it better and better and better, which makes sense as to why he's so good at it. Uh, But this was super fun. There's so much fun to chat with. Um, We talk about the impact of theater, uh, the state of people nowadays and how things are really weird at the moment, uh, which inspired them to do this this show. They're doing a uh, production of Ibsen's Enemy of the People, um, which is fascinating, and should definitely check it out if you are anywhere near New Jersey. Uh, be on the lookout for that. But Annie also is an acting coach, so she got some great uh, little nuggets in this chat for any uh, any actors that are coming up. And uh, yeah, it's just so much fun. I love talking to them. So without further ado, please enjoy the interesting podcast, episode number 75, with Randall Duke Kim and his wife, Annie Ochiogrosso. Theme song time. Oh, how are you guys today? How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Been looking forward to this for a week. <laughs> how were your holidays? Good. They're very good. Yeah, I, uh, my brother was in town, which was cool. He stayed with me, and he's got a baby who's like oh. uh, 14 months old now. Wow. Uh, man, toddlers are stressful. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever it's quiet and you just hear a cabinet from the other room, you're like, what is happening? You go, and he's like, got bleach. You're like, where do you even get it? So when they left, we just sat in the dark for like two hours. We're like, wow, <laughs> you don't realize how on edge you are when there's a toddler. Yeah, yeah. Really? Yeah. How was uh, how was you guys? This? We're doing good. Um, good. What have you been up to? Oh, stop it, Randall. I asked you first. <laughs> yeah, I, I know. Well, OK. Yeah. you're. Right. <laughs> We've been uh, working on our project. What is truth and does it matter? Yeah. And we did a reading of uh, Sophocles' Oedipus Rex. Amazing. And then a reading of Shakespeare's King Lear. Mm-hmm. And we're just beginning to get um, begin a, a work on a production of Henrik Ibsen's An Enemy of the People. Yeah. How'd the, uh, how'd the previous readings go? Good? Really good. Really good. Really I mean, wonderful conversations about... Uh, about linking what those old plays are about and what's happening in the world today. Sure, so, sure. Yeah. Really and the, the whole purpose of the project was to get people talking. You know, we got to start talking about that. You Agreed. know, we can't go wandering around saying, you know, what's what do I what do how can I believe anything? I agree. You know? I agree. We got to stop that. We got to say, yeah, there's a way to know. Yeah, we may be limited in our knowledge, but. We we got to do the best we can here. I agree. It does matter. I guess this is the short answer to that question. You You're know? right. Yeah. You're yeah. right. Because if it doesn't matter, what do we do with issues like justice? That's what I'm saying. How how do we how do we even handle it? What does it mean when we say uh, to uh, tell the truth, nothing but the truth? What yeah. is that then? Yeah, I totally agree. I totally. You yeah. know, it's crazy to me when I think about like the fact that people have always been people. Because when you think about, like, history, you know what I mean? They become larger than life, and you're like, oh, this is guy who did all these things. But you're like, he probably ate sandwiches. That's right. right. And it's so crazy to think about. I also use that as an excuse sometimes 
which to I should to eat sandwiches. Yeah, <laughs> like a lot of them. The Earl of Sandwich, and it's game time. I think I think about when they're like, you should take a class. I'm like, well, you know what? Hundreds of years ago, somebody just figured it out. Yep. Maybe I can do that too. Yeah, and I'm just like, just not going to go to class. So, well, so yeah, those early yeah. Greek philosophers certainly did. Right. You know, and calculating the circumference of the earth, for God's sake. Yeah, they figured it out, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it has to be said. Is it right? I think it's right there. Yep. That right there on oh, my wall. I see it. You see it. Oh. I, wow. I'm just saying, I'm overly sentimental. The second I got it, I was like, this goes on the wall. Oh, that's great. I invite people over just to be like, check that out. It says Brian on it. <laughs> Uh, listen, Brian. Uh, yeah. Are are you a fan of um, uh, what is that? A yeah. Game of Thrones? Oh yes, I am. Yeah. Go on, go on. Well, we just started. Wa- we binged watched it. Oh, what'd you think? You know, it's crazy, right? Ama- uh, amazing. I think the the seasons that really got us were the sixth and seventh season. Oh yeah, that's when, when things... stuff just goes bonkers. Yeah, yeah. But the first shocking thing was, of course, the the Red Wedding. Is that what it's called? That is exactly yeah. what it's called. It's... Oh, <laughs> thank God Almighty! How how did how did you handle it? Because you, you didn't see it coming. You know, no, from a, no, just we from didn't. A, a, no, an actor shocking actor point of view, you start to say, "Oh my God, they're getting rid of their leads." How, I know. <laughs> how do you get rid of the leads? You know, so that that in itself seemed like it was innovative. Yep, agree. Um, you know, and then you link it, of course, to the story, and you feel, um, I don't know, devastated by the I'm loss shocked. of some of those people. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, dude, I'm right there with you. I See, I got lucky because I'd read – so I watched the first two seasons, and then yeah. I was like, this is amazing. And this was before the third season came out. So yeah. I read all five of the books Wow. in that year between. Yeah, so yeah. when I came back – I luckily was able to, as best as you can, mentally prepare yourself for the Red Wedding. So yeah, yeah. every time it went back to the twins, my heart is like, is this it? Is this about to happen? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm looking at everyone else who hasn't read them. And I'm like, oh, God, they don't know. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's right. Yeah, no, it was a shocker. A shock. So how, does the, how, does, how do the books compare with what they're doing? I would say the first book, they go by seasons pretty much. So like the first season is the first book. and. Okay. First book to first season is almost identical. It's very, very close, minus like all the meat. Like you don't get the hundred supporting characters and all the right. other things because they have to condense it, obviously, for the screen. Sure. Uh, the second season, they started veering off a little bit. And then the third season, they introduced other storylines by uh, like instead of introducing 10 new characters, they would just have one of the characters you already know go on that journey. I which see. Is like a, I see. It was a smart way to consolidate. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but, oh. It's so good. The production level on that. I actually, I'm having uh, on my show next week the armorer for that show. The guy who wow. makes all the swords and stuff. Wow. Like, let's talk. A- fabulous. I yeah, know. The visuals are incredible. I well, know. certainly that final scene with the dragon, the dead dragon blasting yeah. the smithereens. Holy know. Christ. You know, for us, one of the things that happened as we were watching is we started to pluck out scenes from Shakespeare's plays. And, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. Said, oh, yeah. he knew. That's why I think it, besides it, it you know, being so popular, it's cl- he was brilliant in how he put it together because he's using uh, yeah, stuff that stuff. we've known through classical theater. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Uh, you know, and people who don't know those plays, like Titus Andronicus, mm-hmm. you know, the idea of eating your children in a pie, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. That's good. We're thinking, <laughs> wow, see people run away from the classics, and this is somebody who's using, using the classics, it, right, yeah, right. reviving it in a different oh, yeah. story. I love it. I love it. He, he he talked about, like, obviously the author, George R. R. Martin, got a whole lot of gripe about the Red Wedding because <laughs> he lets you care about the characters and just murders them all. And you're like, what is this? Sure. Yeah. Sure, sure. A lot of people are like, I can't believe you did this. And he goes, well, in actual (laughs) Scottish history, there was a clan that did that to a rival clan. Like, played drums while they murdered the other clan under, like, the house rights. And I was like, oh, man. That would be awful. Listen, there's stuff like that in Renaissance Italian history. 
you know, really? one part of the family invites the other part to celebrate a wedding. Before you know it, that wedding night becomes a massacre. My God. <laughs> you know, so so we're quite capable of doing that as a species. Oh, yeah. Quite capable. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. I, uh, uh, my favorite thing, though, have got to be the the uh, the uh, the supernatural elements, like oh, the sure. dragons, the white the dire wolves. That. I feel so bad when they get killed, you know. know. <laughs> Gray wind. I love the giants. The army of the dead scares the shit out of me. Right. The king. What are you gonna dragons. do? Wow, well, my God. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can't kill them. So. Nope. Oh, I, I've had so many debates where I'm like, they're all going to die because no one knows. <laughs> <laughs> really? That's really? My, my favorite thing about the series, actually, is uh, so the, the chapters are written from the point of view of the character. So you'll, ah. have, so you'll have Arya chapters, Tyrion uh-huh. chapters, Jon Snow chapters. So, like, if you read the books, you get, like, a personal knowledge of who these people oh. are. Uh. So when they die, it hurts real bad. Yeah. And, wow. the, yeah. and the author uses that to like kind of trick people every now and then so like a good example would be uh in the first book when ned stark gets killed right yeah that is an aria chapter you don't know that ned stark is actually dead until like 50 pages later because aria didn't see it right before it happened the guy grabbed her and left town yeah yeah oh. so the only reason you find out what happened was because there's a sense of chapter and it says she's been crying for like three weeks and you're like why is she crying and then you find out she got killed and like, clever, and clever, then he, and clever. then he gets mean with it. So, like, speaking of the red wedding, so Arya is outside of the red wedding when it's happening, and she's with right. the Hound at, at the time. Well, in the book, she sees the massacre and what's going on, and she starts running away. And the Hound is on a horse, and he chases after her. And the chapter ends by saying, "And then the axe took her in the back of the head," and you're like, "Oh, oh my God!" A <laughs> hundred and fifty pages later. <laughs> You find out he hit her with the brunt end to knock her out and save her. Oh. I was like, 150 pages of me thinking that he killed her. Wow. So, yeah, he gets mean. He gets mean about oh, it. Oh, that's great. Like, it's so oh. good. I actually have right here. Dun, 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 dun. Show and tell time. I have a copy of the first book with a lot of the actors signed it. Wow. Oh, great. Oh, bravo. Yeah. Oh, bravo. Yeah. Neat. I'm excited. Neat, neat. I like that kind of stuff. I think we got to read this. I cannot recommend it enough. It's my favorite book series I've read. Wow. And there's there's five out. There's going to be a total of seven, or so he says, because the, <laughs> the last one came out when season one premiered. So he's been writing the, the sixth book for eight years, something right. like that. Mm-hmm. So we're like, just please finish it. Please. So this the series resumes in April. Is that the word? Yep. It yeah. The uh, this is the last season, April fourteenth, and then the show is done. They're wrapping it up. Well, how could they do that when the author's still writing? He well, they went way past the books already. So that's by the time you get to like season four, there's so much that's different that they're able to kind of write their own ending, and that could be oh. totally separate from how the series ends. Wow. I know. It's been it's been interesting. Wow. Now I heard that they're working on a prequel. They are. Yeah, that's that seems to be the thing now. Is uh they'll yep. have a series and then they'll go back and make another series. Like Vikings is another great show on history. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh they're doing the same thing. They just canceled it after six seasons. That'll end next year, and then they're making a prequel series about that. So I don't know. I'm excited. Do, do you know the series The Last Kingdom? Yes. Uh, kind of like the Vikings, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's a that's another really good one. Is Vikings? Yeah, yeah. I like yeah. that one a lot. But uh, Annie, I want to yes. get to know you. <laughs> <laughs> Me and Randall are old pals now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, right. yeah, yeah. So I know you also uh, are uh, uh, an actor as well, like a real deal actor. So I want to know when did that when did that start? When did the I want to be an actor because there was a makeup kit for Randall. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's right. right. Right, absolutely right. I remember. Well, I wanted actually. I do, and have done less acting over the years. I started off as an actress, mm-hmm. and um, Randall and I met when I was in college, and he was my makeup teacher. Ah, a thread. <laughs> and they also brought in um, one equity actor, and that was Randall. 
to be in a student production, and I loathed him. <laughs> uh, I thought that students should be in student productions. Don't bring these professionals in. <laughs> but I have to say that one mm-hmm. night as we were getting ready for the show, he knocked on my dressing room door and he said, I just want you to know I think you're a wonderful actress. Randall. Now here we are 50 years later. <laughs> there you go. That's why he yeah. knew. Did, now, did he have his regular face on, or did he put one on? <laughs> yeah, no, no, it, it was. But then what I did was I actually left college. I was one credit short mm-hmm. because I went to see Randall in every <laughs> performance of every production that he was in. And that was an apprenticeship that I had over a 10-year period, mm-hmm. that, um, and it was kind of a silent apprenticeship where I sat in on – Uh, these rehearsals rehearsals and learn from the greatest repertory directors that anybody could ever learn from really and watched um watched scene um you know night after night every performance and we developed a way of working that he would come home at night and i would say here's what i saw Mm -hmm. i wouldn't say do it this way or try it this way because i felt that was his jurisdiction what i ended up being or were his eyes so i learned how to give a clear uh feedback of what i was seeing how the audience reacted to it and then i learned i learned a lot about acting sure i mean i i would come home at night and say annie i'm having the damnedest time making this emotional leap from this moment to the next Mm -hmm. and should go back to the script and she said, well, of course you are, because that whole section was cut. So you can't make the transition smoothly or, or with any kind of intelligence. Sure. Because that section of the, the speech or whatnot was cut out. Mm-hmm. So it got to the point where she, uh, she and I said, we have to do these plays uncut just to see how they work. Sure. You know, sure. What does the playwright have in mind? How, do these, how does this thing work? Just on a, Yeah. Right, so we started our own theater. Yeah, um, and, and tried to do that. And that's the way I, then I developed into a director. So I went from that experience of <clears throat> sitting in all those productions to directing plays um, at, at the theater that we founded. Um, and then I also did a lot of research. I mean, I, I spent... And you coached actors, too. And I coached actors. Because I started to learn that for, you know how the stage is about the actor. I think film is about the director, mm-hmm. the editor. I mean, just watching Randy do, you know, again, I had the great privilege of sitting in um, on all of the the work for the different movies that he was part of. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we both coached, we both coached the girl who played Pocahontas in Terry Malick's. <gasps> really? Yeah. <laughs> I like yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. So and he called he called us and said that he was this totally unknown. She never worked before as an actress he, and he wanted help and he um we had become friends with him at that mm-hmm, point. Terry. And so we both went to Virginia to to work uh with her. I don't know how much we helped helped her. I don't think we did. <laughs> well, I don't I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to give it to you. <laughs> Man, so do you do you like is directing where it's at for you? Like you like acting, but do you what made you want to change? And then did you like it when you changed? I I like coaching. I mm. like working with actors, and in fact, now I've had a, a pretty long uh, career of actors. If they're cast in a show, they'll call me and say, "I need you to take me through the whole show." And so I've been able to co say, let somebody is ha- hired to do Hamlet, they'll meet with me for uh, two weeks and go okay. through all of Hamlet. And then they go and start their rehearsal. Um, so I've gotten to know the plays and the, the playwrights really well. I mean, when I directed a production of Hamlet at our theater, mm-hmm. I knew the play by heart. So I never had to look down at a book to direct or... I. I can watch the actors all the time. It's a good power it's a, move. It's a really strange thing because I don't know that it, it's even a choice. I think I have a way of looking at a text that it simply comes to life 
for me, and I think it has to do with all that those years of sitting quietly yeah, and watching directors and actors work, because now I can pick up a script and tell you exactly what's happening. And I and I'll tell you one of the things that I learned was Mike Nichols once said. He was asked well, what might be the secret to his success with working with actors, and he said, he always says to the actors, what is this moment of life really about? And ah. I thought that was great, great <laughs> advice. And so whenever I go into a rehearsal, now that's that's what like I ask. Wanna see. Yeah, I look. Yeah, that's uh, awesome. And it's good, Randall, you had like an agent in the audience. That was like, <laughs> how did I do? Well, at this point, at yeah. this point, we can raise That's it up right. and really get them. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's a pretty good team. Pretty good oh. team. And then you're getting training by watching him and the whole production. That's exactly right. And I'm getting her insights as to what's going on so that we aren't a bunch of actors making speeches at each other. That's a good you point. You know, we get together, not just, just spouting off at each other, mm-hmm. but actually talking to each other. Sure. These characters actually, I don't know. Um, interacting together. Right. That is the point. Uh, What's happening? Uh, Yeah. 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 I've learned that you can always tell like in, in some productions where there are people just waiting for their line. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. Boring, boring, boring. (laughs) Like don't do that. (laughs) Check. (laughs) Yes. 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 How are you taking the line? That's the question. That's right. What are you hearing? Exactly. And I, I asked Terry Malick once, because when we were coaching um, Corianka, was her name, uh, I said, are you more interested in what she does to impact the other actor, or are you interested in how she's impacted? And he said, only how she's impacted. Yeah. He what said it has nothing feeling. at all to do with the other actor. It all the camera has to see her reaction to everything. And that was a big difference from theater. Sure. Sure. You know, um and so, you know, you you kind of pick this stuff up, but you listen to the the masters. You I I don't have um the kind of ego that says I, you know, I need to have my name in bright lights. I I want to I want to be the the I want to hear the story, and I want to learn from those who know more. Sure. Uh, you know, so. That makes yeah. sense. And I'm just yeah. here to take all this free information. So. <laughs> <laughs> that's well, Whatever it's worth. That's right. Know? The other hand is just writing notes and pretending. Just like, oh, okay. <laughs> so see, see. All right. Get her information because she knows these things. Coaching. Underline, underline, underline. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Coaching. That's crazy, though. And you've been in the game for a really long time, too. Which is, which is we've been together right. fifty years. Randy is a little older than me, so you've been around. You've been it, in it for a, yeah, a little longer than that. Yeah, till my current decrepitude. <laughs> <laughs> that just means a different kind of role, Randall. <laughs> That's right. You're absolutely right. You know. And I've been practicing for this one since I was eighteen. There you go. So it's time. It's time. time. The, the world has been waiting. You know. <laughs> so, right. but, oh, he's a, I so I've been playing uh, Dungeons and Dragons. I've been getting into oh, that, which yeah. I gotta say is surprisingly good training for for character stuff. Sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I did not sure. realize this beforehand because you like had to make a character for the, for yeah. the game and you role play it. So when you're at the table, you can choose to do the voice of your character while interacting with the other people. Excellent. And uh, so we've we've built these characters and whatnot, and you have to create an entire backstory for the character that can inform the story. So, like, yeah. the, uh, the uh, person who's running the game, the DM, uh, you'll meet with him and be like, hey, this is my character, here's his backstory. And if you're like, I'm from this certain place, here's what the people's like, you never know, like, two months down the road, he'll be like, oh, you ran into this person who's from the same place that you are. And you're like, oh, <laughs> hey. hey. And he works it. And I bring this up because we have a campaign coming up, and I made a turtle person. Uh, oh, And uh, his name is Gui, which I found out is Chinese for turtle. Uh, you know, did you know that? I didn't know that. No, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, Gui. It's it's spelled G U I, pronounced Gui, mm-hmm. and it means turtle yeah, yeah. in Chinese. Fabulous. Yeah, I don't know what the Oog is, but I like it. <laughs> 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 but it's been funny because I've been thinking a lot about what that would be, uh, as far as the character goes. And dude, it, even in theater as well, like the like you're saying, the the impact of the character and. Are they at effect or in effect to the story? And just looking at them as fully fleshed out people, 
yeah. it's nuts when you start getting into the weeds of characters sure. and actings and whatnot. Sure, yeah. sure, I like it. sure. I'm I, for me. I'm always curious about Ugwe. How did he become what he became? Right. You know, when we see him, what what was his journey like before he arrived at the place that we get to meet him? Sure. How how did he learn his martial arts? Who was he taught by? What experiences did he have? You know. Agree. So I what was he like it, as a young turtle. Yeah. Like, was yeah. he serene? Like just from <laughs> being a turtle, is he or naturally he... cool, or was he like a super angry turtle, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just right. starting to punch right. things for no reason? Right. Right. What is the meaning of I'm life? Frustrated with going too slow. Yes, that's <laughs> that's been the best part about this character that I'm making is he's yeah. so zen about everything. So, like, previously, everyone has, like, a, a, a driving force with the story. Like, I need to go here. I need to save this person. My guy's yeah. just like, I don't know. Let's see what happens. <laughs> so it's been so different from everything else. Like, the character that we have, the story starts with, uh, you're in this, like, it's called the Underdark, which is this, like, night elf realm beneath everything. It's like a whole separate thing. And yeah. the DM said, your character wakes up in prison, and it's up to you to find out how you got there. And then we're just going to start the story and see where it goes. I was like, oh, it's a good idea. And I was like, all right, if he's a turtle and he's also a monk, you know what? I have an idea. I was like, he is like in this deep, like meditative Zen state, goes into his shell, and they just nab him while he's in the shell. And he wakes up in the cell not knowing what's happening and is totally cool with it. He's just like, oh, I guess I'm, I guess I'm supposed to learn something here. Yeah. And everyone else is like freaking out. I need to get out. He's like, ah. <laughs> so I, I stole from you is what I'm trying to he, say. Here. He, 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 he sounds like Uwe's relative. That I mean, I don't want to yeah. say it's a total I mean, ripoff because his name is Gwe, not Uwe. So I guess it isn't a total that, ripoff, but I like to say inspired, you know? Good. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Good. I like it. Nice. I yeah. like it. I like it. Yeah, it's been a good uh it's been a good character <laughs> study, if you will. Uh yeah. but uh so talk to me. You're you're doing this production now. What is truth? Does it matter? And you've got uh uh enemy of the people coming out. So yeah. when you were making this, you said Oedipus Rex, King Lear, and now Enemy of the People. Is there another one or is this trilogies? This is it for now. This cool. will be yeah, it. Yeah, it's for culminating now. in this one because this yeah. one is closest to our time. It's the most modern of all of them. You know, I don't know if you've noticed that um, the films this year mm-hmm. all tend to be somewhat political Social or issue-driven. Issue. For sure, for sure. Um, you know, and uh, Ibsen is the father of all of that. You yeah. know, he, he when he was writing, he started off with fantasy plays. And then he, actually, he felt that actors were not good enough to embody oh, fantasy yeah. characters. <laughs> And of course, he didn't. He didn't have the digital world we have today. Yeah, for sure. He had CGI to play with, but he decided to write plays that were about common people because sure. he thought that was something closer to them. And so, when you when you work with him, I think it's pretty impressive that he is the father of all mo- not just modern plays but film itself. Yeah. Um, right. And the piece that that we're doing enemy of the people is this, it it just, you know, whether you talk about Flint, Michigan, I mean, the, the, the backstory is that Mm -hmm. they have these mineral spas, spas that are bringing um, great wealth to the town. Mm -hmm. The doctor, a doctor finds out that they are somehow contaminated and that they can bring disease. He informs the leaders of the town. The leaders decide, "Mm, we don't want to lose the money. We'll keep that a secret for a while. And the doctor decides to pursue it. But the, here's the key to all of it. The, th- the difference with Ibsen is, you know how we tend to be either liberal or conservative. Good guys, bad guys. Yeah, He true. He yeah. wrote the play because when he wrote a play called Ghosts, he got scathing review. And that play was about syphilis. Huh. So you can imagine in 1880 that people went wild. I mean, look look how crazy we went when that woman said motherfucker. I'm like, you know. The- I know, right? <laughs> it's it's, like, okay, it's such a weird that. time. <laughs> right, she didn't pull out a knife. But <laughs> at any rate, you can imagine how they reacted when the, you they found out that the maiden character had syphilis and that his mother was totally fine with his uh, flamboyant lifestyle. 
yeah. that brought him the disease. Um, at any rate, it, the liberal press was cruel to him. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so he decided he was going to go after everybody. He used to keep, what was it, Randy? A, a scorpion. A scorpion or tarantula. on, on his sure. desk. And he would open up the little cage, a little place where it was confined, and get a little piece of apple and put it and watch this creature go after this apple. And he said, that's what I want to do to an audience. I want to be that. Yeah. I want want them to be terrified and shaken by what they see on the stage. Agitated. And so um, I think we go wrong with it because most actors, most theater people tend to be liberal. So they want to make it a play about conservatives are bad and liberals are good Mm -hmm. but that is not this play at all it keeps you on the edge of your seat because you think oh wait a minute wait why am i agreeing with the mayor of the town right yeah you know (laughs) or or why do i think the doctor is out of his mind um so it's it's just one of the most exciting plays uh, and he doesn't get enough credit for it people think of him as being a dullard and I will say one other thing, that if you like Duke Way and you like Randy in the movies, you haven't lived till you've seen Randy on stage. He was born for the stage, and he and Dr. Stockman, who's the lead in this, you can't tell the difference between the two of them. Um, I'm as crazy. Really? <laughs> hey, whatever works, you know. That's right. Um, so, but, uh, by the way, Ibsen was so radical that we can't even handle him in our time. Really? He believed in individuality in the extreme yeah. oh no oh yeah totally totally he was against any kind of herd behavior any kind of herd mentality that if you're an individual go for it sure go for it because so, you have yeah uh, otherwise what's your life worth gotcha. you... he was like an anarchist at heart Oh, yeah, I, yeah. It, yeah. I, you wonder how a, a society could 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 exist. Well, if and they, he, he said, don't them. expect to have any friends. Oh, He's, man. You, you're going to be an individual. Expect. You have to be, be honest alone. even with your friends. Um, and he, you know, he and his wife had separate bedrooms sometimes because marriage, he didn't look at marriage as an institution where two become one and every, you know, yeah, Yeah. they had great disagreements. He had, he had affairs outside of his marriage. Um, and he said, if you agree with me today in 10 years from now, I'll have, I'll have a totally different point of view. (laughs) Don't try to follow me and just walks out with a scorpion box. Oh, you have Um, your own thing to follow. Sure. But I think it's so important. I think that's, I, one of the reasons that this links with that whole truth project is, Brian, we have to find out what we think as individuals. we got to quit I agree. looking into one side or the other or, yeah. an, you know, just go from one herd to the next herd and say, mm. who am I? What, what am do I, doing I believe? Here? You know, um, because if we don't, I just think we're just going to bat this thing back and forth and nobody's going to move forward. I agree. Um, I totally agree. That's like, it's okay to have an opinion of your own, but we get the way that like society has become specifically in the last, I'll say two years, it's become mm -hmm. so like, get into your echo chamber, surround Mm -hmm. yourself with people that echo Mm -hmm. your sentiments to just further solidify it. And you start using your feelings as your facts. And it's so, Mm -hmm. what a weird time. I think Mm -hmm. about it all the time. I was like, everything Mm -hmm. crumbled, but now Mm -hmm. what happens? Like, yeah. (laughs) You know, because the the institutions that were there before were like, this is what this is, this is what this is. They both crumbled. So now yeah. we're like, yeah. I don't want it to end. What's yeah. happened? Where do we go from here? When yeah. you've taken the game and been like, we're now playing a totally different sport with a racket. You're like, yeah. but it's, yes. it's basketball. I don't, <laughs> I don't know what that means. Like, he has a racket and he won, like, by a lot. You're like, but it's right. basketball. Yeah. Right. It's right. so weird. And, but yeah. it's on your shoulders now. I think we've screwed up royally. We tried. I mean, in the 60s, I thought we had a good shot in the 60s, what we were fighting for. And mm-hmm. and then we sold out. Um, and I think that uh, it's time for the young yeah, to, I agree. to take the yeah. responsibility. Yeah. You know? I totally and I think you, you, brought, you were brought up in a world that is more multicultural and more... Um, uh, you know, open. lenient and yeah, open. That's for sure, 
I totally agree with that. I mean, desegregation was in like the '65, I think. So yeah. you yeah. think like grandparents' age, they were kids at a time when that was still a thing. Yeah. So yeah. You're, they're called your formative years for a reason. Yeah. You know, yeah I, that's right. I, I have this weird yeah. theory that like you are who you are right around puberty. You can grow yeah. up and whatever, but you're still that person. That's why you have people yeah. that are like, I still yeah. feel like I'm 12. You're like, ooh, maybe 15. <laughs> not to 12. 12 is tumultuous. Yeah, really, really. Uh, but yeah, it, 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 it makes sense. It makes sense. It's just weird that like the, the generation time that we have at this moment where the people who are in charge that are making the rules aren't necessarily in the world that they're affecting. Yeah. You know? yep. 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 It's yep. so weird. It's so weird. Yep. But it is interesting because I do feel like everything is so crazy that you know you're in a in a in a moment in time where you're like I'm yeah. gonna be talking about 2016 forever. <laughs> it's, like, it's like how I picture people right. when like Nixon was in charge. You're like, you know what that was like. It's like yeah. I don't, but it sounds right. crazy, and you probably knew it was crazy at the time, as opposed to hindsight. We're like, we just didn't know. I don't know. Weird. Yeah. Right. Like it and we work at the Kennedy Center. Oh, what? So we were right really? there. Right. Yeah. The water yeah. Game. Oh man, what a time. Yeah. People are weird. Isn't it crazy to think like I our love... species? <laughs> our I, species right? is something else. How have we? I mean, I look at other world. species and I think, oh, you guys know what you're about, and you're there, yeah. and you're <laughs> what you have to do. But our species is like yeah. lunatic. Oh yeah, Lunas it's so weird. <laughs> I, 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 it's like I said before. I just can't. I'm still wrapping my head around the fact that like these people of old were people like the old west. I love the old west. I love westerns. Yeah. Like everything about it's just cool. Yeah. In the frontier, yep. just go get a tent and try to survive. Yeah. Uh, but to think that, like, oh no, they were they were just people as well. Yep. I'm like, that's yeah. right. But how? But that's true of all of them. I mean, I think that that's what we lose uh, sight of. With and because Randy and I have spent an awful lot of time, you know, two thousand years ago and four hundred <laughs> years ago. Good but years. for us, they are people. That's why I, yeah. I'm always so saddened by. The fact that when people do Shakespeare, they do it in this kind of stuffy way where they they can't connect with the, the characters in the play. And once you learn that they are people and that they're, you know, now they may be in positions like kings and queens that, that we don't know, you know, so few of us will ever experience. Mm -hmm. But even that, even yes. that, um, they still have to deal with love, hate jealousy all of those things that we who don't have those positions to have to deal with um and i think to examine it to examine it far away and see yourself in something that happened two thousand years ago i don't know i think that just brings us closer to our own humanity i, agree. I think if we let that go we have to start all over again <laughs> you know oh yes oh yeah. yes now with uh, all of this political correctness, I mean uh, that that damn song, uh, "Baby, It's Cold Outside," and I'm thinking, <laughs> really, are we really going to go there? Come on, the issues are so much bigger. You're right. You are right. It's a it's a it's a weird time, and the brain space is weird. And as toxic tribalism becomes the norm, it's mm. another weird thing where it's mm. like you're just looking for victories. You know, yes, it's like, I'll tear down true. whatever I can to oppose the other side when you're like, mm -hmm. guys, we're on the same team. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I think yeah, about that yeah. a lot. When it, yeah. Like when you have the, I mean, right now there there are a lot of parties, but you know of the two major ones. And it's like, we're all in America. Just want you to remember, like if, yeah. it, if you're shooting one foot that shoots the other foot, we're all that's, bleeding out. Just, just that's keep, right. That's keep in mind. Absolutely. But yep. it, it brings back to the question. And I do believe truth matters for that reason. Like, facts should matter. Truth should matter yeah. because that's uh, universal. Yeah. You know, you can have opinions on things, but your opinion doesn't sure. change what it is. That's right. You know, right. It changes how you look at it. Yeah. It's so strange. So yeah. strange. But yeah. I'm also – so I'm I, I'm 28, I think. Yes. <laughs> no, I'm 27. God, Give me the facts. Hold on. Yeah. That I feel like I'm 27, and nowadays that counts. <laughs> no, I'm I'm 27. My God, I'm gonna embarrass myself on my own show. <laughs> uh, and so I I grew up in the weird time where like I did not have internet until I was like 10 or 11, and at that yeah. point they came in like discs you got at the post office. It was like 12 <laughs> hours of Netscape, and then when internet became everywhere, my brother and I would just throw them at each other. 
There were, our neighborhood <laughs> was covered in CDs of the internet. Wow. We're like, we're ninjas now, and just had, you know, tons of them. Mm-hmm. And we got in trouble because we left them in the street. Beside the point. <laughs> uh, so it's, so I, I, I have that memory where, like, I was there in the formative years when everything changed, when there's yeah. internet now, in the 90s, when you're like, I don't know why everything is neon, but here we are. <laughs> it's so strange. But I also, I tell people, like, when they ask, like, what kind of music you listen to, 80s music is my favorite music. It's just yeah. what I like. And I grew up on, like, oldies and 80s music because that's what my parents listened to. Sure. So until I was, like, nine, I didn't hear anything modern. So when, like, hey, would you listen to his kid? I was like, oh, you know, just uh, Chuck Berry, as you do. <laughs> you know, The Temptations, you didn't? No, you had a weird... All right. So this weird sort of, like, from the past, but also not... And then now you're like, the world is changing so fast and I can't keep up. Yeah. So it's impossible. Yeah. It's and impossible. you have a lot more of it ahead of you. Oh, God, I, I hope mean, so. We, we find great comfort in knowing in we that... don't have that much more. <laughs> 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 uh, right, right, right. <laughs> it's I'm out. Yeah, that's right. We're, it's, it's fine. we're living it out. You we, know, we're having we a still, hell of a time we, doing it. We still but... read books. Mm-hmm. <laughs> there you go. That counts. <laughs> you know, that counts. So, uh, uh, Annie, what are some of your what are some of your favorite plays? Having seen so many and been in the theater for so long, well, I, Hamlet is will always be my favorite because it's one of the first plays that Randy and I have worked on exactly. together, and we sure. studied it fourteen years before we did our own production really? of it. Really? Yeah. yeah, and we did it three times. So, um, so that that's up there. King Lear, I think, is very much a, a play of our times. I think it's a really hard play to do um and that's why you don't see too many well if you see productions of them they're usually cut or updated or but people always feel it's just too tough for an audience to get um you know um i love uh of course i love ibsen i would go to the ends of the earth to do here here's another thing brian i think you know this big um fad now and I don't mean that in negative terms necessarily, but is that women are playing men. Mm-hmm. Um, and so they put on a mustache and, you know, because it's the Me Too period, we can all, women should all get out there and play men. My problem with that is you're still telling a man's story. So, oh, um, you know, and so my, I, the thing about Ibsen is he told our story. Mm-hmm. He told the story of Hedda Gabler. He told the story of Mrs. Alving in Ghosts and Doll's Doll's House, a woman who has the courage to leave her children, her husband, a a loving family, to go find out who she is. Um, That's the stories that I want to see more. Yeah. More of. I don't care. I don't want to be a man. I think you guys. <laughs> I don't blame you. It's the awful. last people on earth I want to emulate. <laughs> you know, don't I love lower you. yourself, Annie. You know, I, I love you. I've been with one for 50 years. So, <laughs> so I you get know. It. <laughs> I get it. But I do think there's another story that, yeah. that isn't being told. And we have playwrights out there who have told them, but we're just not, we're not. Uh, doing them I, I don't know so those are the plays that I'm mostly interested in now I'm interested in plays that uh, it change people's lives I want you to walk in the theater and be better for having come um, uh, when you leave when you leave that's mm-hmm. right and I there's one little story of Stanislavs a great Russian teacher who said that there are two kinds of theater there's that theater that you go to and it's a musical with great great laughter and fun and color and the baritone has a beautiful voice and at the end of it you want to jump on the stage and kiss him then there's that other theater where the curtain opens and you think i know that room i've been there before and someone enters and you say my god that's my mother or that's my father and at the end of it, the last thing you want to do is kiss anybody on the stage. You want to go and be with your family around a samovar and discuss life. Sure. And that's the theater I'm looking for. Um, uh, you know, I think the other, there's a place for it, and he agreed there's a place for both. Mm-hmm. I think the, the second one's being neglected. The humanity of it. And I think film and TV do the big stuff better. 
Yeah. I, you know, CGI. I mean, the dragons, you can't. Yeah, no, you can't beat them. It's true. You've got a fire breathing dragon. Or... On Broadway, as wonderful as it is, no. I don't know. I mean, I think I'd put my money on the King Kong in the movies. Yeah. <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> you've got you've got like a, a fire breathing dragon, or you've got Craig wearing a sheet. It's like, yes, yeah, that's yeah. Right. yeah. I mean, yeah. they have the same energy, but it's just not there. <laughs> no, yeah. no. But to see the dragon that comes forth when an actor of Randy's caliber does King Lear, yeah. and we see the dragon in the human being, that the stage can do better. I agree. I agree. The stage oh. is more intimate. It just is what it is. It's a human yeah. experience. That That's you're having it. with people in the same room, the immediate return on yep. the emotion, uh, but movie is the spectacle. It has yeah. the, right. the scale. Yeah, you know? yep. yep, yeah. The the theater will always have the mortality. Yeah, it's yeah. not repeatable. True. And it passes. It is born in the moment and it dies in the moment. True. It's been around That's for it. a long time for a reason. Yeah, yeah, it sure has. Yeah. You you should take that computer and show him your wall. What? Okay. <laughs> show him your wall. Show me the wall, Randall. <laughs> He's gonna love it. He showed you his wall. That's true. Well, I did show you my wall. <laughs> it's the law of equivalent exchange, Randall. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You want me to unplug this? Here you go. No, here. Oh, okay. Okay, I'm gonna unhook you from the. Thing. All right, here. I'm right, taking you. Going to the wall. <laughs> the wall. The wall. Okay, here we go. Uh, Annie. Okay, wait a minute. A little down? darkness. But okay, now let's see. This is. Oh man. Okay, I am looking at a poster of everything he's done, and it's amazing. What? Oh, I see a new print. I see. Oh, what? Matrix, Anna and the King. Is that you on the elephant? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> on an elephant. Dude. But let's see. What what else? And then. And this is from Memoirs of a Geisha. Oh, Where? yes. Here, right? Can you see that? Well, I can. I'm trying, oh, to, I'm so trying cool. to. Show him the key stuff. Go back. What? Yes, the key, the key maker. Oh, Got to see this. <laughs> <laughs> This is with Lawrence Fishburne when we were there. Oh, Can... what? Can you see it? Oh, yes. Oh, that's so cool. You know, just a picture of Morpheus, as you do. And the key. <laughs> I got that's one it. of those, too. It just doesn't look as there. good. Oh. It's photoshopped. I... Uh, let me see. There's Can the you key see that? Oh, man. Dude, I'm surprised you didn't take a key, Randall. I'll be honest with you. Well, yeah, they they offered me all of them. <laughs> I could <laughs> I'd be like, okay, could, okay, I'll take like a hundred. I put them I in could, a box. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I would have that exact same wall where I, if I had those things. I'd be like, I'm right here. But right now, I'm like, I have a picture signed by Ugwe. I've got a picture. <laughs> right. That's the important one. Yeah, <coughs> you have no idea. You have no <laughs> idea. That's so cool, though. And also, don't think I haven't been thinking about this Ugwe's journal thing, because well, I have. I've been like, okay, how many writers do I know? And how can we offer this for free to the public so we don't get sued? Mm. <laughs> There's a way. I just don't know yeah. it yet. <laughs> yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah. You know. No. Such a wonderful character, that Uguay. I, I, I don't know. I, I, like, I like him a lot. Good. Because one day I'm going to come yeah. see you on stage, and I'm going to have my <laughs> recorder with me. And be like, let's just run some Uguay lines that I wrote down for no reason at all. <laughs> Do you want him at a hundred years old or five hundred or? You know what? I think he's Let's a run the gambit. You know, <laughs> we'll figure yep. it out. We'll figure it out. That's great. So, uh, Annie, having coached a lot of people, what do you find is a common uh, uh, thing that actors have to get over? Fishing for information. Fishing for. Information. I think they have to get over two things: feeling the responsibility to please an audience so they're not willing to fail so they play it safe and i think the other thing the hardest thing for any actor is to dig deep to to go inside i think the tendency is to to just put on the outside character to say this is who my character is and i'll play it rather than to actually stand in the the shoes of that person and feel 
what that person o feels. Almost in your own imagination to experience what the character is going through. You know, so that sure. it, so your mere imagination of what that might be like uh, actually affects you physically. That makes sense. Because that can makes the character three-dimensional as opposed to like, this guy's angry, so I'm going to play it angry. It's like, that's yep. not a real person. No, right. no, no. Because, yeah. Because, and act, surprisingly, actors have stuff in them that rarely come out. And when they do come out, I if it. it's cued off properly, stimulated properly, it can be shocking. It can be mm -hmm. uh, strikingly original, you know, never seen before. You know, the way that character gets angry or that actor, you know. I agree. Yeah, that, For me, that's what deep sea diving, almost exploring, is about. And that's what exploring sure. the part is about as you, the actor, joining with the character. You know, I think, too, that because we're so complex as human beings yeah. that we when, uh, actors sometimes don't understand it or they don't want to go there. They think of us as one thing. So like a play like Enemy of the People, as I said, if you're a liberal, you think, OK, all conservatives are rotten or compromise is a terrible thing. Not understanding that all of life is compromise. You have to compromise all the time. It has nothing to do with your political oh, affiliation, yes. you know. And um, and so what happens, I think, is that actors want their character to be loved. So they don't go to the dark place. And I think that's why we do love the evil characters in film, TV, yeah. and in theater. We gravitate towards them because they're showing us a, a kind of dark place that we don't like to go to but i think subconsciously we, we know is in each one of us and i think that that that, that uh that's what's tough about acting for randy and i though you know brian we've been doing it for 50 years these plays you know we've made, made decisions to to whenever the opportunity came to do these plays these classical plays these wonderful masterpieces we live lived with them and and they uh, you know so they become part of our lives in a very natural way uh, i don't see them as strangers mm -hmm. or foreign yeah. or um and so the hardest thing i think for us is when we do work with actors to realize most actors have not had that experience and true you you know so it's tough for them to battle their way to how do i do this how do i live out this character um sure. and film and tv has influenced our theater work tremendously you can't hear actors anymore because they're so used to speaking really? in a mic that when they get on stage they right. think reality has to do with whispering um and that can't be on the stage you need incredible energy on the stage you know so yeah that's what i've learned as well and like the few movies that i've done is you can tell uh, when somebody has been in the theater for a very long time or vice yeah. versa because they'll be on stage and they'll be quiet or they'll be on set and they'll be really loud yeah. and making giant movements. And it's like, no, just pick just yeah, the cops and cameras right, right. Yeah. Yeah. It'll get it all. You know, whereas in theater, it's like, yeah. I don't, I can't hear. I, is he, is there a cup? <laughs> yeah. That's right. That's yeah. right. I remember there was one film book that I had, had read and talked about this stage actor who was doing a scene and he had to lean against a post. And he he just gently leaned against the post. And the director said, lean, lean on it. And he said, oh, on the stage, it's a prop and you have to be careful that you don't <laughs> you tip don't it mean, over. Right. You know, oh right! The film was the director yeah, this just couldn't real. understand. Just lean. It kind of reminds me of your cup. It's like, but the, yeah. it is a different. They are yeah, two different though. mediums. Yeah. So. For sure. But, For sure. But I don't know that so, it's helping. I mean, I, I'm finding even now part of it is age, but I'm finding I can't even understand what people are saying in film today. <laughs> <laughs> What? <laughs> I mean, I, you know, you, you, I don't think you have to knock out consonants. I think they're still worthy. <laughs> I mean, I'm from North Carolina, so we don't use them. You know? <laughs> consonants in North Carolina, remember that. 
Yeah, we just got rid <laughs> of them. We just combined for stuff. American movies, you know you're in trouble. You know, so. <laughs> That's right. It's, I've got I've got an uncle who is like down home country guy, and he. I was excited to introduce my wife to him because I was like, I just want to see if you can understand him. <laughs> it's like we'll just go to his house and we'll see what happens. And he does not enunciate whatsoever. Doesn't matter what he's saying. <laughs> be, hey, go get a drink, get some food, and you know, sit down and we'll all hang out. And I'm just like, yeah, no, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, yeah, like, right, 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 right. Yes, <laughs> whatever it is. Right. <laughs> or in New York, he's, I'm from New York, and they they say Jeet. And my and so my friends, what is it? What is that? Did you eat? What? New Yorkers say, "Geez." Oh, <laughs> geez. <laughs> I like a uh, set. That's a what's that? Yeah, that, that, that? that's right. You're like what? Okay. We just, we we just stop words. <laughs> We're just noises now, which I guess technically that's all words are. Right. <laughs> Intent by noise. Yeah. You know, talking about <laughs> what? Right. Oh gosh. Yeah. You're right, a delight. You really are. He is, isn't he? Yes. He no. Oh, oh no. Is everybody oh, guys. comfortable with you? We should start. <laughs> we should start our own. Well, okay. So, uh -huh. fun fact. <laughs> I'm good I'm good at making friends. I don't know why yeah, I because I did not have a lot growing up, but something clicked. I want to say probably around like 18 or 19 when I was like, "You know what? I figured out who I am and I'm just going to be that guy." Mm -hmm. It's just yeah. how and and I feel like truth mattering. <laughs> Uh, the more honest you are with people, you encourage them to be honest with you, and then you get an actual, uh, like yep. connection, yep. like yep. a genuine conversation. Like th there are a few things I enjoy mm -hmm. more than just talking to people, for real. You know what I mean? And like I I've said before, is like these aren't interviews. I don't interviews are so stuffy, and it's <laughs> like the person is trying to get information out of them. And granted, I am too, but not in like a Oh, I'm going to get the scoop <laughs> yeah. here, you know? I'm like, no, I just want to talk to people. And that's why I love talking to actors, because I'm finally coming to terms with the with the idea mm -hmm. that I might be an actor. Good, I'm still, good, I'm still good. getting used to it. I like it. You know? I, that's... Which, yeah, yeah. I, uh, yeah, I just, I don't know. I just like talking to people. It's just fun. Like, this is, this is life. This is what life is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, this is what it should be. Yeah. And like we said before, like by people isolating themselves and like cutting off connection to anyone that's different and like you're just doing a disservice to yourself, man. You grow by yeah. knowing more people. And like I'm just stealing all of these good tips from people that are way better. So I'm like, oh, sweet. All right. <laughs> Wait, it's a turtle. Check. You know, <laughs> like, and but then you also it, listen. I, I think that, and yes. that's something so few people do today. But you do, you I can agree. tell you're a listener because, you know, as the conversation sure. moves forward, it comes from what something somebody else has just said. So I think that's part of your gift as well. I try. Like, I have no notes here. <laughs> right. right. <That's> good. <laughs> I would just figure it out. I think that comes from, like, my dad was one of those guys that just, he lived, uh -huh. like, 20 lives. And he, I mean, he's still alive. That was a weird sentence. Uh, oh, <laughs> he, was, he, in the past, has lived uh, lives all over the place. Like, when he was in his 20s, he was like, I want to sail the world. So he saved up for a year, bought a boat, and did it. Wow. He just left. For, like, 15 years, lived in Hawaii, sailed the South Pacific, like, landed on islands with people and, like, Got a parrot like the, the uh, what were they called? They were um, red shining wow. parrots. I think they were whatever they were. They were uh, in the zoo in San Francisco. They were there because my dad got them as a gift wow. from some guy, brought them back. And the zoologist was like, we can't import them, but you have papers that they're legally yours. You can donate them to the zoo and then we'll have wow. them. And I was like, just crazy That's stuff like that. So hearing... All of his stories yeah. and whatnot, I think that just got me interested in humanity and the possibility yeah. of life. Because you always hear like, oh, I knew a guy who knew a guy who went yeah, to yeah. Europe and backpacked for a while. I Me, mean, I was like, my dad yeah. did all of those yeah. things. Yeah. And he's my dad. So I've like got like a, a, a deep interest in humanity and in people and like the world. So I made a show. <laughs> yeah, why not? There's yeah. so much to do out there, you know? Yeah. That's absolutely right. It's just cool. Yeah. But I, I so I went to uh, 
I went to Colorado for the first time last uh. month. And I did it because I wanted to test myself uh, a, a, as far as acting goes. Because you don't know you yeah. can do something until you do it. Like, you can have theory, you yep. can have training, but yep, until yep. it's game right. time, you don't really know what you're capable of. So I have a buddy out there who uh, has his own, like, media company and has great gear and shoots a bunch of stuff. Yeah. So I was like, hey, how about I come up there, we'll write a bunch of stuff, and then we'll shoot it. Yeah. And I can use that for my yeah. reel. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I went out there and we wrote nine different scenes, nine different characters, like, over the course of a day. Uh, we just, you know, got a little <laughs> drinking in a laptop. <laughs> it's magic. <laughs> and so, so we wrote them, and we shot all nine scenes the next day, which went different. It was nine, nine different locations. We ruined yeah. a hotel room. Absolutely ruined it. Because wow. <laughs> the, the, the backboard on the beds of the hotel that I was staying with was a part of the wall. It wasn't <laughs> attached to the bed. <laughs> So we just moved the bed to the other side of the room, <laughs> grabbed a desk, put the desk in front of the bla- the backboard, wow. and it looked like an office yeah. because you had this piece and the desk and a lamp that we grabbed. So, you know, <laughs> creativity. Uh, but I, I did this thing because I was like, I'm going to uh, I'm gonna go here, and I'm going to make or break myself. I'm going to see what I am capable of because if I'm not capable of it, I would like to know now <laughs> instead of like mm-hmm. – way later on so we wrote these scenes and the last scene that we shot uh he asked me he's like can you cry on camera i was like i don't know i've never tried i mean i got a lot of trauma and pain we can bring it up if we need <laughs> you know <laughs> as you say dig deep <laughs> and so we fil- we filmed this scene and i learned yes i can cry on camera i also yeah. learned no i cannot stop <laughs> 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 so as so as I was leaving, when we finished the scene, I like I kept crying afterwards. I was like, "This is stupid. <laughs> Acting is dumb. Why did we even do this?" And it's just me and him, like in a room at like twelve thirty at night, and I'm just crying. And I was like, "I don't even know why I did this. It's so stupid." And then, and so when I was leaving, uh, he was like, "All right, I'll edit this up and I'll get it to you." And he sent me uh, a rough cut like th- two weeks ago of that scene. Yeah. And it's so good. Ah. So now I'm like, maybe I am an actor. Wow. <laughs> so then what's the next step? Been, uh, so I'm at the moment now. So, yeah, I'll say it on the show. I don't even care. <laughs> so, <laughs> so my goal is to be in Star Wars. And it is uh, – not an ego thing. Like, obviously, anyone wants to be in Star Wars. It's Star Wars, the biggest IP in history ever. Uh, for me, Star Wars was one of those things that was a constant for me as a kid. And when I yeah. went through really rough times, I would put Star sure. Wars on and I could go into that sure. universe. Sure. Like, I'm surrounded by Star Wars things. It's just, yep. it's my thing. Yep. Some people like sports. Yep. I like Star Wars. So uh, I became an actor because I want to give back to mm-hmm. something that gave me so much. So mm-hmm. I want to contribute to this thing. And obviously it's one of the biggest IPs ever. So I was like, if I need to become an actor to help contribute to this thing, that is what I will do. Yeah. And I've loved it so much doing it and opportunities have opened. But I'm at the point now where like the the film industry is so like uh, secretive with information. Yeah. Yeah. You know, there's not like, hey, go here oh, yeah. and you can audition to do that. Nobody knows anything yeah. and when they do, they won't tell you. So I've learned to circumvent a lot of things. And so I'm at the point now where I need a reel to get an agent or a manager to get me in the door for these auditions. Right. So I went and filmed all these things to have a reel to showcase what I can do. Yeah. Once I get all that edited together, I can try to shop myself around. Cause that was one thing like, it's really just who you yep. know. Yep. You yep. know, like so, somebody knows yep. something. And uh, if you can, the way that I see it is I'm willing to put in the work. I flew 2,000 miles to go film in yeah. a hotel room. <laughs> I I now so, know yeah. that I have yeah. some semblance of talent to do it. And then I've also got the drive to where, like, I live in Florida. My wife <laughs> lives here. She loves it here. But when we got married, I was like, here's the deal. If they tell me I need to be in L.A. tomorrow, mm-hmm. I'm leaving. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's just how it's – this is this is why I'm doing all this. And she was like, no, I get it. Yeah. So I feel like this is, you know, just – esoteric essentially 
Uh, if I'm willing to do all of these things, they'll hopefully see with the combination of the real yeah. and like, oh, this guy can actually do it. Yeah. And he's so driven, he will fly anywhere in the world if need be, that yeah. maybe it'll get me in the door. Like, now, something. listen, Brian, are they, are they uh, about to shoot the last part? So they just finished the episode nine. So here, let's get a little inside baseball, <laughs> shall we? Um, <laughs> so, so the last four, so that would be The Force Awakens, Rogue One, uh, The Last Jedi, mm -hmm. Solo, and now Episode Nine were all oh. filmed in Pinewood in London. And I went there, and I met ah. with the casting department and found out uh, you have to be a UK citizen. Because what? of the pieces. Oh, Yeah. <laughs> talking about drive wow went there and granted i was already there for vacation beside the point um so uh i found out that legally they can't hire you because you need a work visa and the thing about work visas in the uk is they are specific to the profession so if you get a work visa to be a plumber yeah. in the uk yeah. you can only yeah. be a plumber you can't be doing other things and when it comes to acting you have to have a job first to get the visa, right. but you can't get a visa without a job. Yeah. So it's the oh, catch twenty two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Now it's all okay. getting my reel yeah. to look as good as yeah. possible to show to the right yeah. person and yeah. hope they yeah. take yeah. a chance. So when we'll you do the reel, the are, is it all original background. writing? Yeah, yeah. It's all original writing. It's all just stuff that either we mm. shot or things that I was in and little indies and whatnot, just cut together to show the best clips to be like, oh, this guy can do it. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Is there variety? Yeah, yeah. That's that was actually the 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 biggest benefit of the Colorado yeah. trip. Was prior to that, a lot of the roles that I got cast in were like the best friend or the comic relief, and like it was a lot of things that I didn't really have to do a whole right, lot of introspection because right. I was like, <laughs> I know this guy, I got it, I'm this guy, but like a little different. So I had a lot of that, and I was like, I need. I need variety. I need to show range in different things. So when I went to Colorado, all nine scenes are totally different and on a different emotional great, pitch. Great, great, great. So I was great. like, put this all here, and if it looks good, I'm locked and loaded. Yep. I just yeah. need the right, yep. need the right person yep. to see it. Yeah. Oh, so, I hope it works. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure it will. We were turned around by yet. Star yeah. Wars when it first came out. We mm -hmm. went to. We were living in Washington at the time. Sure. It was premiering. And we had to go see it, and yeah. I turned on by the by the uh, the first three episodes of that thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Randy has a reel, and at the end of his reel is um, I think it, it's almost ten minutes of death scenes, because we come to the conclusion hey. that he's died in almost every movie he's been in. Right? Yeah, you're good at something, <laughs> you know. <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> you, you found your niche. Death scenes. <laughs> That's right. Hey, they're they're harder than they look, you know. And you've got a wide variety and range of death scenes. So like, yeah, I'm into it. I'm into it. <clears throat> it's great. It's all it's all just f trying to figure out how sure, to play the game. Sure, 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 sure. You know? And it is a game. I mean, so... that's another thing that we we held auditions the other day for our show, and you see actors. They just yeah, want to work. They just, they don't care about anything else. Just please hire me. I'll do anything. Hire me. Mm -hmm. You know, because there's so many actors out there and and not not that many. There are a lot of jobs, but again, it is who you know. It is, uh, you know, how hard you're able to play the game. People, a lot of people can't afford it. It's just expensive. It's true. So when it's we were true. young, it now looking back, easy. it was a lark. Yeah. It seemed yeah. easier or something. Mm -hmm. I feel like there's definitely, especially with like the culture we have, where it's like fame for fame's sake. There's yeah. So many people that are into it now. That's why for the longest time I was like, I felt gross calling myself an actor because I was like, everyone calls himself an actor. It's a thing now. Like, mm -hmm. I've done, I've, I've filmed with my phone, and therefore I'm an actor. Yeah. I was like, man, I just don't want to be that. You know what I mean? I want to really yeah. get into it. Uh, but now it's like, if you don't, the thing that I've learned is like, if you don't consider yourself the thing yep. you're trying to be nobody else will and you know and i've and i've i've got the the real now and i've done some scenes where i at the very least i've got a little confidence in my ability yeah which is the biggest thing to come from yep. all of it yeah yep. mm -hmm. but yep. 
it's so strange. Show business, man. The biggest word is business. Mm-hmm. It's so, You're right. it's so information You're right. is the thing that I've learned. Like the the finding out things, like getting breakdowns, you can't yeah. get unless you're an agent or a manager like that's not readily available yeah. stuff for like you can't audition for something you don't know is auditioning you know what i mean yeah and it's so it's so weird that, it's such a weird game but i'll crack it that, that middleman of manager and, or agent uh, has, has uh taken a bigger place than when we were starting out mm-hmm. i've spent most of my life without an agent yeah really? you oh, you can't do a manager who was a dear ours, friend but but never an never agent never an agent and now you need one wow. because you don't know who's rubbing who's back, you know, who's connected. Absolutely. Yeah. And he's Absolutely. turned down more work. I, he's, <laughs> Randy's turned down more work than he's accepted, actually. Um, and people used to be appalled because he, when he was young, he decided that he wanted to be a classical actor. Stranger. And so mm-hmm. he was offered, set, what was it, The Sun and the Charlie Chan uh, TV series? It was a long time ago. But he turned that, and finally mm-hmm. one of these agents called our dear friend who was Randy's manager and said, look, all I can offer him is money. I can't offer him art. And so, um, you know, our friend sure. said, well, he's just not interested. Um, but I have to say that that said, we've never been without work either. I mean, we've made a career, 50 years of, of doing Finding what we do. love. Yeah. 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 Um, you know, so I think both... I don't think you have to sell out or or think less of yourself or, you know, for give up your dream uh, just for the sake of mm-hmm. doing anything. I, I think you've got to stand for something, uh, you know, and, and they'll see that. You, if, I, if you're not singular, again, I don't know why anybody would use you. There's too many people I agree. out there, you know. I totally agree. That's my plan of action. So, like, I, I'm a very weird guy. And I know that. <laughs> so I can come at people to be like, oh, this guy stands out, yeah. for better or worse. Yeah. You're going to yeah. remember me. And I, I've learned that, like like I said before, by living in Florida where there's nothing and being willing to go the extra mile, I'm already not one of 800 people that showed up to a cattle yeah. call on yeah. Tuesday. Yeah. So yeah. if I could come at them on my own terms, like if they listen to a podcast I did and we're like, oh, yeah. this guy's he can talk to people. Yeah. He's personable. Yeah. And then they find the real. It's like, oh, yeah. they came to yeah. me. Yeah. I just put myself yeah. in front of them. And that, I feel like, is would be significantly better in standing out yeah. and making an impression than moving to L.A. Yeah. and going yeah. to auditions every Tuesday. Be one of 400 right. people, you know? Yeah. And with the well, and now that podcasts now. are the hottest thing, oh, um, just think of all the films. <laughs> think of all the films that are going to need people who can do, you know, play the role of a podcaster. <laughs> True. Oh man, I I always so like I have certain people that uh, I've always taken inspiration from and like oh that was inspiring I'm gonna save this for later when I need it when I need it and uh, the the Rock and Will Smith uh, are two people that just like spout stuff and I'm like oh all right <laughs> makes a lot of sense and uh, so every day when I think about this kind of things. I always ask myself three questions. It's what do I want, how bad yeah. do I want it, and how hard am you I willing it. to work for it? And the third one's the most important because you can want something and want it worse than everybody else, but if you're not willing to go that extra mile, yeah. the guy in front of you will get it. And, so I'm like, all right, I see you, Star Wars. And I'm going to add one for you. Yes. What do I have to do to get it? Yes. And that it's got so much groundwork. <laughs> 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 So when everyone talks about like, oh, how do you book guests? I was like, it's a lot of work. (laughs) I've had guests on my show that took nine months to nail down. Where like I would start talking to their agents or their manager and we'd, okay, well, their schedule is busy. That's fine. I don't mind. And then I'd check in every few weeks because it's so easy to get lost in the shuffle. Uh, Because obviously they're busy and doing things and trying to get work for their client. And I'm like, hey, remember we talked about Mm -hmm. like the show that maybe you get on? But nine months, nine months is the longest I've gone where I was like from the point of contact to getting them on my show. Wow. And uh, it's one of my favorite shows. It's awesome. <laughs> and, I, and I, oh man, I spread yours around like crazy. <laughs> I <have> no idea. <laughs> Whenever anyone's like, oh, you have a show? I was like, yeah, listen to this episode. I was like, You'll get a good feel of what, you want to know my show at peak? Right here. This is what it's like. Yeah. Just works. Just works. 
but you're a sweetheart, Brian. Oh, stop it! I get what you I get. You are. You are. I get what I get. I do both. Whatever it is. <laughs> well, if you happen to be I, in in uh, New Jersey between February 16th and March 3rd, be our guest. Come see Enemy of the People. Be our guest. We would <laughs> love. That. Yeah, that'd um, be awesome. Because we're hoping that it's going to be a pretty swell yeah. production. Yeah? yeah, we're looking forward to it. Good. Good. I want it to stimulate people. You want to, you want the scorpion apple situation? Yeah. We do. We <laughs> Go do. out there and That's live, right. people. Live. That's right. You, so what we've learned is you need a scorpion <laughs> to open the night with. They're like, enemy of the people. <laughs> scorpion. That's right. We're the apple. Like, what, what's in the box? Right. And then just wait till they're uh, in and then just drop an apple in. Be like, That's welcome right. to the theater. <laughs> 3D. And do keep us abreast so of your career. I'm dying to hear yeah, what happens. Yeah, yeah. For sure. Hey, I'll send you my reels. Oh, okay. no, I'd love okay. to. Okay. You know? I got your email. Oh, good, good. You know, criticism. Excellent. Good. And you could be like, you'd be like, mm, this scene works really well. And you could be like, Whoa. <laughs> be honest. <laughs> that was, that's like the biggest part of my imposter syndrome is I'm like, I, I've got a pretty good personality I've been building for a while. And uh, <laughs> with a lot of my friends, I was like, you know, you say I'm good, but I feel like you might be mixing that with my personality. Uh-huh. You're like, I really like this guy. So he's done these things. So I like the things that he does. I was like, we need to be. We need to be outside of this, guys, because then we'll have an American Idol situation <laughs> where I'm like, I can sing. And then everyone's like, he really can't. Who told him to do this? Well, <laughs> I'd love to see it. Yeah. yeah. I'm curious. You know, when I'm Randy, curious. when we were doing John. John Wick, whenever Randy do- goes in to do John Wick, which he did part three, I think. I'm not sure. If he, did we do that when you talked to him last talk? time? Yep. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Briefly. So he, at any rate, he went in to do it, and whenever we see Keanu Reeves, he always wants to do Hamlet, or um, and it's true that he really? carry he carries a copy of Seagull or Hamlet, or he has great aspirations of those plays that we end up, of course, we've done so many of, but it's one of his major interests. So he did Hamlet for us the last two times, mm-hmm. uh, two times ago that we did uh, John Wick. So that kind of what? Yeah, yeah. Dude, you had Neo as your Hamlet? Yeah. <laughs> right. What is his life? <laughs> That's so cool. Yeah. Dude, I'm so pumped for John Wick 3. Yeah. It's it so good. Be. I mean, I know Keanu's it should, in it, but it like should the be. time and the Yeah, it should be amazing. I think it's going to be the best one. The best one, you think? Well, I do because the story's so interesting and, and it's kind of on the edge of your seat. And the set, when we were taken around there to see one the one set. set it was breathtaking because it was, really? well, it was all glass. Yeah. It was a glass skyscraper. But mm. like, whoa. Couldn't whoa. figure out how the hell they could even I... shoot in it because it was all glass. So where do you put the camera where it won't how be do you seen? Hide? You know, yeah. how, do you... how do you hide the crew? How, how do you do a fight scene in a glass? In the Matrix. Yeah, yeah really, really, really. <laughs> yeah, but wow. it should be pretty great. Yeah, it should be good. Yeah. yeah. I'm excited. I saw Keanu riding a horse, and I was like, "That's I'm right, yeah, in Manhattan." I'm here for it. <laughs> in <I'm> Brooklyn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what more do you need? Right. Let's be honest. Right. Oh, great. Yeah. That's so cool. At any rate, thank you. This was so much fun. Going I, we got our fingers crossed for you with regards to Star Wars. Yep. And you appreciate it. Appreciate it. Yeah, part of that. I think it's great. It'll happen. And then we can come back to this and be like, he said it would happen. I'm like, I know. I said this for yeah. a long time. It's great. It's great. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. It'll work. See ya. It'll work. See you guys yeah. later. Take care of yourself. And... Hello, friends. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of The Interesting Podcast. If you'd like to follow the show, it is at Pod of Interest on Twitter. If you'd like to follow me, I'm at Jedi Brian all over the place. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all Jedi Brian. If you enjoyed this episode, please share and tell your friends. Let them know we got some cool stuff going on over here. Also, 
I've gone and made a Patreon. So if you'd like to support the show, you now have that option over at patreon.com slash Jedi Brian. On that note, special thanks to Chris, Ben, Jim, Daz, Kelly, and Daryl. Your support means everything, and I cannot tell you how much I appreciate it. So until next time, be well.